let's look at the graph that we are given here. Um, this graph that we are given says to us monthly photocopying costs for different contracts. So we've got contract one, two, and three over there. And we have, firstly, I want you to look at the things I keep on emphasizing about graphs. You need a title whenever you have a graph. And the second thing that you need is the two um, titles. It's not really titles, but it's labeling, you know, labeling of the Y axis, labeling of the X axis, labeling of the of the dependent and the independent in commas that call it X and Y. But here we're not really fussy um, in terms of that. So we've got this contract company, um, these three contract companies. And let's see the questions um, that we do have in terms of these contract companies that we are given. It says to us, pro print hires out photocopying machines and offers three contract options. So we saw there, we've got contract one, contract two, and we've got contract three. So it says to us, um, the three contract options are shown in the graph on the answer sheet. So the graph that we were looking at is the graph that they're talking about. Write down the number of pages at the point where contract two and contract three cost the same. So it means we need to go onto the graph and see where the two graphs meet. When anything is the same, they meet at the same point. So let's go and see where these two contracts meet. So we need to first see which one contract one is and which one contract two is. No, it's contract two and three. Let me just remove this. So it's two and three. We can see that we're working with the dotted line and we're working with the dark black line, not the gray one. So we're comparing this line and that and this line. Where do these two meet? These two meet over there. Don't try to force it. Let me just erase that and see if I am seeing. Yes, there it is. So these two meet. They meet over there. So what generally happens is that they will give you um, some leeway in terms of that. So we want to know where they meet. But here it says to us, um, at which point do they meet? At which point do they cost the same? So they cost the same. If you take your graph and you go all the way sideways in terms of that, you will find that they, they, they meet at, that's 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 300, 400, 100, 200. It's about 1,290, you could say that. So what am I going to, how am I going to put it? They meet... At 1,290 rand, okay? And also, you can say that they meet, that's 3,100, 3,200, at 3,300. Sometimes, or mostly, it's better if you put that as X and Y. So it will equal to 3,300 copies and 1,290. That's a coordinate that you are using in terms of that. Okay, so please represent it the best way that you know how. The next one says to us, um, Academy School makes 1,500 copies per month. So we want to determine which contract will be the cheapest. So we have to go to the graph, 1,500, and we need to go all the way um, and see which one is going to be the cheapest for it to use. And whenever you have such graphs, the cheaper graph is always the one that's at the bottom of all the other graphs or at the bottom of the other graph that they're comparing it to. Let's look at this graph. So here's the graph that we've got. Here's 1,500 copies. So at 1,500 copies, 
contract two, if I'm not incorrect, yes. Con I'm going to go and see which one my, my pen touches first. It touches this one first. So contract two is going to be the cheaper option. If, guys, I was, they, I was asked at 100 copies, look at this. If I was asked at 100 copies, then this one would have been the best option because it would have been at the bottom of every other graph. Okay? So, I'm just going to erase that so we're not confused in terms of what we are doing. So, it's going to be contract two that is the cheapest. Contract two. Perfect. The next question... The next question um, says to us, Copy King charges a rate of 70 cents per copy. And, and it's practical. That's what people are charging. It's either they're charging 100 rand, I mean, uh, one rand per copy, or they're charging 50 cents a copy. So in this particular case, they're charging 70 cents per copy. So it says to us, Copy King charges a rate of 70 cents per copy for hiring the copy machine with no other costs. And whenever they tell you with no other costs, it means that it's zero copies. It's zero rand. But the moment you start making one copy, two copies, three copies, then you start charging. Okay? So it says to as you draw, draw on the same grid. So we're going to use the very same grid that we've been um, given. Draw on the same grid another line to show the cost charged um, by copy king a lot of calculations that we are going to be doing but i'm going to be using a scale of 500 because we've been given 500 as a scale here so i'm going to use 500 a thousand and so on and so on i don't want to start from 100 rand because it's going to frustrate me in the long run okay i'll start at zero so for zero copies let's go see how i'm going to do that calculation all these marks guys all these marks so they charging 70 cents per copy. And because they're charging um, 70 cents per copy, it means that for zero copies, it's going to be zero rand. So already I've got um, my whole thing going on there. So zero copies, zero rand. I'm going to start drawing it very soon. I said to you guys, I'm going to use 500s. 500 times 0, 0,70, 1,000 times 0, 0,70, 1,500 times 0, 0,70, um, and so on and so on. Let me see where it ends because I don't want to end up, um, I'll take it all the way to 3 to 4,000. Let's take it all the way to 4,000. So I would have all these other numbers um, going on, 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 and then at, I'll have 4,000 because that's the last one. But don't do that, guys. Please write all of them because, okay, let, let's try and do a little bit more so that you guys can have a, a nice um, idea of what's happening and also just not losing marks in terms of that. Just now you go and do exactly what I've done and then you lose marks. I don't want you guys to lose any marks from that, okay? It is a lot though, um, 2,500. Now I'm going to try and skip a bit. And if I skip now, um, I'll skip to 3,500. Oh, but then it doesn't really make a big difference, does it? 3,000 times 0, 0,70, 3,500. You see, I wasn't even that far off. Don't be lazy. And then 4,000 times 0, 0,70. This is now um, your rough work because what's being marked is going to be whatever that we have there. Let's go and do some calculations. 500 500 times 70 cents is 350 rand. So I know already when I'm going to plot, it's going to start there. A thousand times 70 cents, 700 rand. Interesting. I'm seeing a doubling up, but I'm not going to make an assumption as yet. 1,500 
I'm not going to make an assumption as yet that the numbers keep on doubling. It's 1,050. You see, you don't want to make poor assumptions. I almost made that. At 2,000. One thousand four hundred. Hey, hey, I'm seeing. Look at that number and look at that number over there. Already it's saying to me one thousand four hundred. There's a bit of a, a pattern um, going on over there. Two thousand five hundred times seventy cents. One thousand seven hundred and fifty. Okay, beautiful. Three thousand. Times 70 cents, 2,100. This is all on your rough paper, guys. I'm going to move 3,500 times, and that is going to be out of three marks. So don't lose 2,450. And the last one, which is 4,000. 4,000 times 70 cents. 2,800. I'm going to cheat that a little bit, but I don't want you guys to cheat, please. Ne? So I know at zero copies, it's going to be zero rand. And at 500, it's 350. So I'm going to try and, and, and use those all at the same time. Let's clean this up, guys, so that we're not um, confused. Let's eliminate all confusion. So it's zero copies, zero rand. At 500 copies, 350. 350, one, two, three. 350 would be halfway there. So it would be there. Okay, that doesn't look like a... Already making some mistakes. Let's see. One, two, three. 350 is going to be there. Stunning. And then the next one is going to be 700 and 1,050. 700. So here is going to be 700, 6, 700. 1,050 would be somewhere over there and then 1400 and then I'm going to skip all the way to 2800 so the next one 1400 is going to be just before there and then at 4000 we say it's going to be 2800 if I am not incorrect 2800 would be all the way here if I'm not incorrect so now I'm going to draw my graph but I'm not using a ruler so please don't <laughs> mind mine as such sometimes it won't really be according to your ruler so don't be too obsessed in terms of that joining the dots hoping they do what I need them to do and then going all the way up there, okay? So that would be our graph and then it would meet somewhere there. But we haven't been asked for that in particular, okay? Stunning. 